So in our through tube installation video, I said there were some program changes that were gonna have to be made, but they were outside the scope of that video. Well, they are the entire scope of this video, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's all on the computer, so it's gonna be software capture, and you won't have to look at me anymore. Let me show you how we do it. I've got two programs that I did for the demo. Sample programs, stripped down, neutered, backside only. So just to show the differences between a conventional pickoff, knockout, part handling, and then using a through tube. So let me show what we got. We'll jump over to the screen. So first up, we have the conventional without through tube. This is gonna be your just conventional pickoff, knockout. So the first thing, first area to look at here is your approach distance. We have Z minus 30. Here's your G650, spindle sink, slaving the sub to the main. Here's your rapid approach distance. We're gonna stay 30 thou off the end of the part. And then we're gonna come up and we're going to feed part length minus 750. We're using a local variable for our part length, which in this case is six inches 10. So we're gonna come up six inches 10 minus 750. Pause for a half second, clamp, high pressure, finish sinking, cut off, all that happy horse. Ah! Come down here, back work. So after the back work is done, you have your typical M34 with a Z argument. Your M34 is your, your can subroutine. It does all, runs a little sub program in the background, brings your part over to the mailbox, comes up, knocks it out. If you're running Swisses, if you're watching this video, you probably have some experience with this. You've seen it. Moving on. Here we have a different program with a through tube. Same part length. And then here's where the changes start. We have our same G650. Our rapid approach distance is different. So change that to be minus 30. I should have done that, but so it's minus 30, minus 750. So we have 750 sticking out of the pickoff when this comes up because we're not using an M34. We're holding on to it and then we're using the next part to push it back through the through tube. So that part is still sitting in the pickoff, hanging out there. So if we wrap it to Z minus 30, it's gonna run the end of your last part right into the end of your next part, throw all sorts of alarms and make horrible noises and your cat's gonna pee in your shoes. So this, this minus 750 is the amount that the part is sticking out, which is determined down here in our approach distance or our final pickoff length. So we're leaving more distance for our approach and then we're opening the sub. So our sub is closed while we're coming up. We're retaining the part, we're retaining control of the part because if you have heavy parts, what can happen when you come up, the inertia of the part, if the chuck is open, the part will just slide out and smack into the end of your next part and then you'll get your parts dinging up. It's not a good look. So we're gonna rapid clearance distance and the amount of the part that's sticking out of the chuck from the last part. We're gonna open our sub, we're gonna wait a half a second, and then we're gonna feed up the same amount. Part length minus 750. This is where this approach distance comes from. This minus 750 is how much is sticking out. We could change this. We wanna choke up on it a little bit tighter, minus 50. And then we would change this, minus 50. So you want these to be the same. It's just your clearance distance minus the amount that your part's sticking out. So it doesn't matter what it is, as long as this approach distance is greater than whatever is sticking out. You could have that be a half inch, doesn't really matter as long as your part's not gonna smack into the end of your next one because your sub is still clamped at this point. So I'll set these back to 750, just for convenience. Minus 750. So that's the first bit that's different. And then down here, and this is for an A20 by the way, with this, notice the G25, no other machine is gonna like that. So if you're screenshotting this to copy paste it into your own program, this is for an A20 with a FANUC control. So down here at the end, back work, generic back work, no M34. Because we're not, we're not knocking the part out, we're using a through tube, that's the whole point of this video. So all we're doing, we're just calling T30. All this does is just calls the sub back to machine zero, 
and it's going to wait there for the next part after it's done with the back work. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward to convert one to the other. Hopefully you've watched the first video about installing it at this point. Hopefully you have a through tube to actually run your parts into before you change the program, otherwise they'll end up in your spindle bore. So to recap that real quick, your approach distance, you have to stay away the amount that your part is sticking out. So if you're coming up, if you have a quarter inch sticking out, you have to stay an extra quarter inch away on your approach. And then real quick, I'll go up here to your file compare. This is Simcoe. If you're looking for editing software, file storage software, Simcoe is a good one. It's working well so far. So we got our file compare. So you can see these side by side. So on the left, we have our through tube program. On the right, we have our conventional pickoff knockout program. So on the right, we have our approach distance, Z minus 30. On the left, for our through tube, we have Z minus 30, minus 750. And then if you'll notice on the right, the chuck is open before it comes up. With the through tube, we're retaining control of that part until we have finished wrapping up the next part. Feed up, that's the same on both parts. Feeding up to our pickoff distance for the next part. Go down here, all your back work. <coughs> our conventional pickoff knockout program has an M34 with a Z argument. You don't need a Z argument, we're just using this. This is probably a short part, so we're, we're using the Z argument to get it a little bit closer to the mailbox. On the through tube program, we're just, we're finishing up our back work and we're calling T30. And that's just gonna back the sub up. We got a full retract and T30 just calls the sub to machine zero. So it's just gonna back up and move over to pick off the next part. And that's all there is to it. You can get fancy with it. You could use local variables like we have for our overall length. Won't let me do it in file compare. Go back to our through tube program. You could use a local variable. Equals 750. And then if you, for whatever reason, wanted to change this, maybe you're running a family of parts with different pickoff distances, it'd be a very strange use of variables, but you could do it. Wouldn't be the strangest thing I've seen or done. You could do it that way, but I won't get into that. Maybe if you guys like the video, they'll let me do another one going into local variables and subroutines and things like that. All right, so that wraps it up. That was a rundown on the difference in part handling between our conventional pickoff knockout programs and our through tube programs. Hopefully you found it useful. I did get off the rails a little bit there at the end, but local variables are a whole nother can of worms for another video. I'll put your phone down and get back to work.